Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited this week because I get to show you an image which I started collecting data for back in January. I've waited nearly six months to show you this image. So the image this week is actually a collaborative project between myself and Nick from Windy City Astro. And the reason we decided to do a collaborative image is because we both have a telescope with the same focal length. So I have the Ascar 400 and Nick has the Rasa 8 inch uh, telescope, both having a focal length of 400 millimeters. So we were having a conversation and we thought it would be a great idea to actually do a collaborative image and pull our data together and see what we can produce. Now, we decided to go for the Cone Nebula, and this was very visible, very high in the sky back in January, February, and March. So I cracked on straight away. I was outside in the winter with my woolly hat on trying to capture some data and doing a little bit of recording um, for YouTube. But unfortunately, Nick had a horrendous winter when it comes to weather. So he had month after month of cloud. Um, so it took a while for Nick to pull together some data. But in the end, we managed to capture about 21 hours worth of data together. And what we did is we took that data, we both went away and edited it, and then we came together a couple of weeks ago now to see what we had produced. So this is a quick chat that Nick and I had over Zoom. I hope you like the images. Hi Nick, how are you? How's things? Great, how are you, Russell? Good to see you. Yeah, really good, thanks. I love your background, by the way. That's uh, oh, really cool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got the uh, Rasa eight behind me. It is uh, actually there. It's not a virtual background. Yeah, that's uh, very but, nice. But uh, yours, you got the, uh, the California Nebula. Yes, nice? yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Nice uh, starless image. <laughs> uh, hey, that's a good way to go. I think I uh, almost did that for the one we're about to look at. But yes, yeah. spoiler alert. I put the stars back in. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you um, how did you get on with the uh, the data? You um, you happy with what you you edited? Definitely, yeah. I um, my contribution was uh, what it could be uh, for the Cone Nebula region. Uh, it was a very cloudy winter. Usually in <laughs> Chicago, it's it's definitely cloudy in the winter, but this one was particularly uh, uh, rough, few and far between on yeah. the nights. You did so I was happy for the f two speed. So for what I got, it was uh, really quite excellent. Um, and then uh, with your data, the O three especially was just fantastic. Um, 03 in Chicago can be a little, a little shaky. Uh, you need a lot more integration, but uh, with yours, just fantastic. So it was yeah. able to, uh, yeah, it was a, a kind of a joy to work with this data. There was uh, very yeah. little noise, especially in the hydrogen alpha. Yeah, it's always nice when you have a lot of data to work with. I think it just makes the edit exactly. so much nicer. Yeah, but yeah well, um, do you want to say a bit about then why we chose this target? Because I know it was your your decision to go for the cone nebula and the, the framing sure. that we went, went with as well, because um, that was kind of on you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we uh, we kind of went back and forth on a few objects uh, based on uh, latitude differences and things like that, and, uh, you know, what, what kind of clear skies we'd have in different directions. Cone Nebula is what we, we went for, and I kind of like it because of the, there's sort of three different uh, parts of it or three different types of objects in it. You've got the stars that are there. None of them are too bright, which is nice. Uh, but there's some nice little clusters and things. And then there's this great uh, sort of structure to the nebula with the cone nebula, obviously. And then you've got this, this dark area of dark nebulosity and some bright nebula inside of it. And then across the entire thing, it's, it's less structure, but it's more kind of a texture in the, the hydrogen alpha clouds and I, I just think it's fantastic it's a, a kind of an interesting uh, processing challenge to bring out all three of those and kind of balance um, what you're doing with all of them so I thought it'd be a good challenge and as far as the framing went yeah that that one kind of mountain of dark nebulosity yeah. with the a pocket of bright nebulosity inside of it I often see that not included in the frame people tend to kind of center the Christmas tree, tree cluster and the cone nebula in the center and lose that little bit. So I thought, okay, if we can just kind of crop it over and kind of look at the region as a whole, that'd be uh, maybe a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and I think that that works really well because, yeah, like you said, you do see that the cone nebula slap bang in the middle of quite a lot of the frames, but there's yeah. so much going on around it. And I just, yeah, I just love the framing. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what you've uh, done with the data. Do you want to share your image first? Sure, absolutely. All right, so here is 
my final image. Nice. That looks really good. Thanks very much. Yeah, I um, yeah went for a standard SHO processing, and uh, I guess we can show the kind of the original channels. Yes, uh, you were kind enough to put these together in APP. Yep, uh, combining our both of our HA data and then uh, URS two and O three data. Yeah, and yeah, nice and clean, especially the HA. I mean, that is yeah, very clean. <laughs> it's so easy to work with. And I think and, it's uh, about, oh, is it about 20, 21 hours in total for... for the yeah, I think of, that's about what we had. We'll have to get the, the uh, official uh, tally yeah. integration. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so my initial combination looked like this. Obviously, the magenta stars and everything. Yep. And then I, uh, yeah, through uh, color masking, um, I went with a starless image here and then was able to move through to less green and more of the orange and the blue color um, to something a little bit more like this. Yeah. And really then good. I did a, I flipped the orientation a little bit. Um, we'll see which one you chose. Um, uh, but I ended up going um, for a vertical view. It's kind of the, I don't know, I kind of like the darkness down at the bottom and the light up at the top. Yeah. Um, this whole region kind of looks good though from kind of any orientation. So. Yeah. I think it works, whichever uh, You know, maybe I'll change my mind <laughs> at some point on this. But then, uh, yeah, then we had the, the final and then a, an annotated view with a few of the objects that are, yeah, that looks uh, really good. That are identified here. So, yeah, I was uh, quite happy with it. That O3 data that you had, I didn't have to boost that at all. <laughs> Oftentimes, you know, a lot, it depends on the, the object, right? There may not be a lot of O3 signals, so you have to boost it and bring it out quite a bit. But this one, it's fairly strong to begin with. And your data was fantastic, and I just I just kind of let it sit there, and uh, it mixed really well with the uh, the S. Yeah, I think you I think you've edited it really really well. I love it. Um, and what Thanks. the the stars you you put back in? Yeah, they're the uh, the hydrogen alpha stars. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, a little a little bit. Uh, they're not bland, but you know it's just white. There's yeah. no uh, no color data to them. But then again, it's narrowband imaging, so. I don't feel too bad. That's the, but, the uh, same approach that I took as well. I put the uh, the HA yeah. stars back in at the end. So, yeah, yeah. I think it I looks say, great. The, uh, really good. The starless looks really nice. Yes. I, mean, I thought <laughs> maybe we'll stick with that. But. I know they're, they're quite anyway. controversial, aren't they, the starless images? But I absolutely yeah. love them. I, uh, I, I, yeah. yeah. We don't want to start any fights <laughs> online. But, uh, yeah, it's, gosh, sometimes it looks so nice. So, um, yeah, so that was, a, uh, that was my looks approach. Great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Cool, I'll, sh I'll show you what I went for then. Um, yeah, all right. Let me load this up. Okay, wow. so this is uh, this is my final uh, image, and I went for oh something um, a little bit different to my normal editing uh, style. Yeah. yeah, so I followed um, Steve's approach for, um, on the channel Entering Into Space, and he wow. recently did a tutorial on uh, tone mapping or color mapping. Um, hmm. Oh yes, yeah. and this was the first image I've ever edited in Photoshop. So I didn't use Pick Insight um, that much for this image. I basically did all of the steps um, in Photoshop. So I will load Photoshop and I'll show you the the approach that I took. Um, so this is kind of the approach I took. So this was the initial um, combination, the SHO combination. So this is just hmm. combining the the three channels. Um, and then what I did was um, followed his approach of trying to balance the histogram. So by using um, by using adjustments, if I click on one of the layers, um, so by using levels adjustments, you can select the RGB channels and then you can try and balance them out so that the histograms line up. Um, so that's essentially what I did. And I started by selecting a certain region of the, the, uh, the image. Um, I started by selecting the, the highest signal region um, and then lining up as best I could the, the histograms for each of these selections. So I'll show you kind of the, the selections I made and how it like impacts the, the image as we go. So this was the first um, change I made. So I selected the highest um, region and then altered the outside. Um, then I actually altered the, the the highest signal region as well, so the cone nebula and this this section of the image. Um, and then I just kept on selecting different parts of the uh, the image until 
I actually had edited um, the whole image itself. And each time just using the image adjustment, the levels to line up the histograms. And as you can see, the histograms are getting more and more lined up as we go through this. Um, and it just brings out a lot more of that color depth. Um, and yeah, hopefully just uh, adds quite a bit of uh, interest and a bit of, bit of color to, to the image. So a completely different approach that I would normally take. Um, once I got to this stage, I then added in another um, layer, which was the hydrogen alpha layer. So I used that as, as sort of a luminance layer um, to add in a little bit more detail to smooth out some wow. of that noise in the image. So um, you yeah. can see it's quite noisy at the moment when I was just working on the colors. But when I added in that hydrogen alpha layer, it just uh, just cleaned it up and got rid of quite a lot of that noise. So a completely Incredible. different approach. Um, and it's just yeah. all about, I, I, Steve does a much better job at um, going through, he did an absolutely brilliant tutorial. Um, so I will link to that in the, the description below, but I, I think it works quite well. And yeah, just uh, completely different wow. to what I would normally do. Yeah, um, but I, thought I I'd love that. It yeah, it's unlike anything I've seen you do before. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a prism of color across the whole thing. It's really fantastic. Yeah, and it's um, I also do the hydrogen alpha luminance layer. Do you do you do any noise reduction prior to that? Do you just kind of let the colors be as noisy as you want or do you um, no so so yeah. um on this between this layer, so I don't know whether you can see it clearly on here, but between these two layers I did do a little bit of noise um the noise yeah. reduction. So you might be able to just about yeah just about see yeah. it. So I did a bit of noise reduction huh. and then I added in the, the um, gotcha. yeah, the, the HA layer. Um, and then yeah. like you, I added in the, um, the hydrogen alpha stars um, to mm -hmm. uh, just to put the stars yeah. back in. I, I, I'm going to keep this, uh, the, this starless image as well, <laughs> because I yeah. do love the, do love the starless <laughs> Put that image. one for your wall. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the, the approach that I took. I love that. I love that. Two completely separate approaches, same data. Um, it's fantastic. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I was going into this like, I don't know, maybe we both went with, uh, you know, kind of the blue and gold. It'll be, they'll look different, right? It's never going to be exactly yes, the same. Yeah, so. yeah. But that's a wow, the great yeah, thing about variety. Astro. You cool. can kind of edit it in so many different ways, so many different color palettes. Yeah. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah. yeah, especially narrow band. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can really do whatever you want. And we had so and really, I mean, I think this was, it was such a great, collaboration to have to know that even on cloudy nights you were getting data that I could then <laughs> play around with which yeah. is fantastic but also I mean just this idea that we could over several months image in two completely different parts of the world yeah. and then put that data together and then manipulate it and come up with two you know certainly nice to look at but completely different images <laughs> yeah it's a I don't know, it's just a cool hobby it was, yeah. it was great fun I really enjoyed yeah. it and uh We'll have to so see which. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to plan another one. Definitely. Yeah, okay. Find one. Definitely. Yeah. Once you've got some uh, real dark skies returning, yes. maybe at the end of the summer. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got some short yeah, nights. Yeah, some then. So, excellent. Yeah, and we'll have to see which uh, which people prefer. That's true. Yeah, yeah I guess we got to vote. So. <laughs> yeah. Let us know in the comments. See. I think I like yours better than mine. But, oh, I don't uh, know. I like yours yeah. as well. Your edit's yeah. great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, well thanks, thanks Russell. This is fantastic. Yeah, no, it was really good fun. Thanks. We'll have to do it again soon. All right. Sounds good. All right, take care. Cheers. So as you saw, the edit that I pulled together was very different to my standard editing style, and I hope you liked it. And thanks again to Steve at Entering Into Dark for your tutorial. He has a fantastic channel with some amazing Pick Insight tutorials, so make sure you check it out if you haven't already. And thanks again to Nick. I really enjoyed capturing the data. I really enjoyed the chats over Zoom. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to Nick's channel, make sure you go and check it out. It's Windy City Astro. Has some absolutely fantastic videos. I will put both of the images up again on screen now for you. Please do let me know which you prefer in the comments below. Do you prefer Nick's edit or do you prefer my edit? Please make sure you hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next video.